All right, I'm back. Make sure you guys press that like button. All right, so I'm going to read the most recent post for from Super Sushi Samurai on X.com uh, in regards to an update to what you see right here on your screen. Funds are safe. Grateful to announce a positive outcome for our players and holders. We have decided to reward the white hat a 5% in ETH for rescuing user funds. The remaining funds will be transferred to the following multi-sig address under SSS team control. And then below that, they have the multi-sig address. The balance of 5% ETH will be provided by the SSS team ourselves so that the LP is restored to the pre-exploit time. Bounty. A bounty to the white hat for rescuing the funds comprising of 5% of ETH, as well as an additional 2.5% in SSS token and land. The SSS tokens will be locked for a month. Quoting the white hat, my interest in these NFTs and tokens stems solely from my appreciation of the concept and the great community your team has cultivated. Yeah, right. New team member, to help safeguard against future incidents, the White Hat will be joining SSS as our tech advisor. Next steps, one, we will be taking a snapshot of holders as, as of the time of the exploits. A V2 SSS will be airdropped based on the snapshot. SSS, in the game will be returned to the game account that deposited it. So basically I'm thinking that's the private key in the game that's connected to your wallet address. Next steps. Number two, we will be re auditing all our existing contracts again, including by blast recommended vendors, whatever that means. Only after this, Will we relaunch SSS, LP pool, and game? The estimated timeline would be two to three weeks. We will continue to post updates in the post. So that is the recent update in regards to Super Sushi Samurai. Of course, you see what's happening on the screen. Uh, you know, this is basically, in my opinion, have come to an end uh, because nobody's going to wait. No, nobody's going to be down to wait two to three weeks and still play the game, right? Uh, I told you guys how I felt about the airdrop. You know, I don't think that the airdrop is going to be geared towards or attractive to anyone uh in the united states i don't think the airdrop will be attractive to anyone in the uk or australia or canada or new zealand i don't think that the game would generate a passive income for anyone outside of landowners and even the landowners aren't going to generate a significant passive income because the players aren't going to generate a significant passive income. In order for the landowners to generate a passive income based off of the tax or the fees, there has to be a decent amount of income generated from the players. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. So the airdrop is not bullish. The earnings are not bullish for players and the earnings are not bullish for the landowners. The only thing that's bullish is trading the actual token. That's the only thing that's bullish. And I'll give you an example with this other project that's on blast. I forgot what it's called. Uh, their token is called yield. You would have got in down here or anywhere somewhere down here. Uh, you would have made a decent amount, even with a hundred bucks. If you'd have got in right here, 
and rolled it down and rolled it back up, you'd have made some money. You'd have got in right here, right here, right here. It Basically, anywhere on this chart, you would have got in, you would have made some money up until maybe in, in this point. If you got in right here, you'd have been wrecked. Uh, you basically got in here anywhere. Unless you would have got in here and then up here, but, you know, you guys know what I mean. For the most part, uh, the people who are making money are the guys who are trading the token. Like, dudes are putting in large amounts. Dudes are selling large amounts, uh, relatively speaking, to my uh, what I think large amounts are. So, as you can see, I'm just scrolling. People putting in thousands. People selling thousands. You know? Selling 20,000. Selling 40-something thousand. Selling 6,000. Like, people are selling. And people are also putting in large amounts. 35,000. So, the only way to really have made some money or make some money in these type games, these two specifically, but more specifically, uh, SSS, is to be up in her uh, selling. If you was one of the guys in here selling. Or in buying, buying and selling, buying and selling. The people who are playing the game were not going to make any money. So for anyone on Telegram asking me, what do you think happened? Like, they're going to get 5%. The alleged white hat hacker is going to get 5% of the Ethereum. There was about 9 million USD worth of Ethereum. 5% of that is like 450,000 or something like that. Somewhere around there. Let's just say 450000 to 650000 in between there. Is that worth it to do something silly and just uh, orchestrate uh, some weird stuff? I don't know. On, one thing I do know, and this is a fact, this scenario is hurting the project more than it's helping. Why do I say that? And I'm going to close. Because these are well games being played on the... On, on the uh, on the blockchain, on the Blast blockchain with this game. What does that mean? In two to three weeks when they come back, one well is going to be thinking about what another well is going to do. This well is going to think, okay, these other wells are probably going to sell, so I need to beat them to sell. That's how these games are always played on the charts. Always. Especially if you got to wait two weeks, it's like a month, three weeks, it's like, a month and a half in crypto. So you mean to tell me people are going to wait two to three, maybe even four weeks for a game to get audited after it's been audited the first time. So that, that that's not going to give any anyone a peace of mind. Then the guy that hacked it is going to be hired on a team from a pre, from a press uh, 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 perspective. That still don't make sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so the guy who hacked it is going to be on the team. So that that makes people feel kind of funny. That's kind of funny. You know what I'm saying? And then number three, you got to worry about what one whale has to worry about what another whale is going to do. So you got to play the, uh, the mind reading game across the Internet. The likelihood of uh, success in this is somewhere around something very, very low. So in conclusion. Um. I think it's over, you know, and shouts out, shouts out to the guys who, who post comment after comment after comment on every video with the LOLs and the giggles and stuff like that. Because like I said, everybody in crypto is basically wrong. Some people get in projects early. Some people get in projects and they wait years or some people get in projects and do both. You know what I'm saying? If you want to pop off, you're gonna to have to you're gonna have to figure that out. You're gonna to have to get jump in something early, or get in something and wait some years, or be satisfied with some uh, small to medium gains here and there, and that's relatively speaking as well. And then you gotta you gotta be willing to to run the risk of potentially losing whatever you put in. So only only invest risk capital, you know what I'm saying, for scenarios like this. With that being said, let me know what you think in the comment section. It's icy. And I'm out.